wrote Apprentice Witch, The Apprentice Witch, okay? And he's very nice to ask me to read a little section of his book, okay? And I'm very excited. Um, spoilers, because I haven't actually read these before, so I'm, I'm going to have to. <laughs> so is everyone ready? Okay, yes! So this is from chapter 14 of The Apprentice Witch, and it's called Splat, okay? So it was so easy. Snotlings were not the cleverest of creatures, and were easily lured by the aroma of the eggshells eggshells piled on the floor of the cupboard. After half an hour, there was a pile of four snotlings in the hallway, and it had been quite some time since the fourth one had emerged. Crawling back into the cupboard, Ariane wouldn't give the nest one final vigorous shake, but nothing happened. After another quick jab and still no movement, she was satisfied all was well. She would just need to raise the banishing spell and return them to the void. I think that's it, she called as she backed out of the cupboard, relieved to have completed her first official task without any trouble. She gave a huge sigh of relief, unaware that she had been holding her breath. But as she emerged back into the hallway, she saw the Middleton twins dragging two of the stunned snotlings off into the kitchen like a pair of rag dolls. That was bad enough, but things took a sudden turn for the worse, when a high-pitched growl, something like an angry cat, sounded from behind her. Turning, she saw another three snotlings who had crawled from the nest, and one of them had a huge, thick crest of brown spines. It was a female a she-snotling, and females were always more vicious and dangerous than the males. And she had just seen Jasper and Casper dragging her nestmates away. Oh, ruin, rot, Ariane groaned, and as quickly as she could, she hurled a spell orb at the new snotlings in an attempt to stun them. She missed. The spell bounced into the cupboard, exploding the nest with a loud, dusty whoosh. Bits of nesting material, scraps of old coats, twigs, a sock, even bits of a shoe were blown out into the hallway. The snotling scattered, and as fast as lightning, scrambled into the kitchen in search of their nestmates. Ariane was on her feet as an ear-splitting scream came from the kitchen. The scene that greeted her would have been funny if it had not been so terribly and seriously awful. Casper had abandoned his stunned snotling, so Jasper was hugging his as though it were his most precious toy. Mrs. Middleton stood on the kitchen table with one of the snotlings dangling from her apron, snapping its angry jaws. She was screaming as if she were actually being murdered, whilst the baby laughed and gurgled with obvious delight at his mother's predicament. The other male snotling was skipping around the kitchen, emitting high-pitched shrieks and hisses. Summoning the glyphs again, Ariane Wynne spelled two bursts of energy at the snotlings, but missed once more. The smell of scorched magic mingled with the damp washing and cooking odours in the kitchen. And at that moment, the door swung wide open and Cyril appeared, bouncing a large ball. Close the door, Ariane Wynne shouted, but it was already too late. The two male snotlings had skipped out between Cyril's legs and through the open door as the boy gazed in amazement. Ariane Wynne took a deep breath, brushing stray curls from her face. <sighs> this can't possibly get any, and as she turned and froze in horror, Casper had seen the she-snotling and had obviously decided that an awake snotling was far more exciting than the limp clammy thing he had discarded. Ariane Wynne could see what would happen, and she was so powerless to do anything about it. If she tried to stun the snotling now, she could hit Casper. The she-snotling was moving forward slowly, wary of the toddler. She was trying to get back to the nest, but Casper lunged forwards, grasping the she-snotling around the throat with his chubby little fingers. Shocked, the she-snotling did nothing except give a slight choked whimper. But as Casper reached out with his other hand to pet his new toy, the she-snotling's mouth gave wide, revealing spiny, sharp teeth which she clamped down into the pudgy flesh of the child's hand. He screamed at once. Thick tears tumbled down his cheeks, now pale with fear. He shook his arm, trying to throw the creatures off, but she was fast. My babies! My babies! Mrs. Middleton screamed, hovering between rushing forwards to help and clambering back up onto that table. The she-snotling was flailing about in the air, Casper still wailing in terror and pain. In a split second, Ariane Wynne saw her one and only chance. Drawing on a deposit of magic that had clustered around the kettle, Ariane Wynne summoned the glyphs speedily and hurled a stunning orb once again. It soared across the kitchen like a fiery comet, but something wasn't quite right. The ball of energy was the wrong colour. Far too big, far too bright, and far too fa fast. Thump and splat! It found its mark. But instead of simply stunning the snotling, the spell exploded it. There was a burst of stinking, slimy green gloop that splattered and splashed across the kitchen floor and Casper's chubby face. Everyone froze. Everything was quite quiet, except for the drip, drip of snotling goo. The spell had been too strong. Arian, Arianne looked at Mrs. Middleton, unsure how to explain exactly what had happened. Mrs. Middleton half sat, half collapsed into a chair. The baby still happily gurgling in her arms. She raised a hand, pointed back to Casper. My, my baby, she whimpered. 
Casper, for all of his screaming, was recovering quite quickly and sat poking the head of the snotling, which was all that had survived the spell. As it wobbled on the kitchen floor amid puddles of green slime. Blimey, Cyril said, a broad grin on his face. That was ace, miss. Do it again. Yay! Yay.